Today, I'm going to be testing out how much memory actually matters for gaming on the new M5 chip, comparing the 16, 24, and 32 gigabyte configurations to see which one gives you the best performance for your money. And in this video, I'll explain how Apple's unified memory architecture works, and then we'll put all three models through their paces, testing both native macOS games and demanding Windows titles running through translation layers. Now, remember that on a Mac, you cannot upgrade the memory later. It's permanently soldered onto the chip, so choosing the right amount from day one is crucial. And here's why. When a game needs more memory than the system has available, macOS starts to use swap memory. That means instead of accessing the ultra-fast RAM, it begins writing temporary data to the internal solid-state drive instead. And whilst that solid-state drive is quick, around 6 gigabytes per second, it's nowhere near as fast as unified memory, which runs at over 150 gigabytes per second, depending on your Mac's configuration. But here's the catch. On a Mac, unified memory is also shared between everything, your CPU, GPU, and apps. So when a game loads high-resolution textures, shadows, and geometry, it's pulling the data from the same shared memory pool that macOS and your background apps are already using. And on a traditional Windows PC, it's different. You might have 16 gigabytes of system RAM plus a discrete GPU with its own eight gigabytes of dedicated VRAM for textures. That means the max 16 gigabytes of unified memory has to do double duty, effectively acting like both system RAM and video memory. And as a result, when that unified memory pool fills up, especially with modern games that demand a lot of video textures, your Mac starts to overflow into swap memory, causing a sharp drop in performance or even crashes. So the real question that we're gonna be answering today is how much memory do you actually need right now and how much is it worth paying to future-proof your Mac, especially if you're going to be gaming on it in the future. So the first thing I'm going to say is that the majority of native macOS games actually run great on the base configuration M5 chip with only 16 gigabytes of memory. That is, as long as you're using sensible graphics settings. On this particular M5 MacBook Pro, I actually could not find a single game that wouldn't run at what I'd call acceptable graphics settings on the base M5 chip. Here, for example, I'm testing out the game Grid Legends on all three configurations of this MacBook Pro at the highest native Mac resolution of 3024x1964 at the ultra high graphics preset. Now the only difference between all three of these Macs is the fact that they have different RAM configurations, the GPU is exactly the same, and therefore the performance is identical too as long as we don't run out of memory. And as you can see with this game Grid Legends, even at maximum graphics settings at the native MacBook Pro resolution, which is about 70% of the resolution of 4K, the overall game is only using 9.74 gigabytes of memory. And because it doesn't exceed 16 gigabytes, then the game performance is identical on 16, 24, and 32 gigabytes of memory. Next, we're testing out the native Mac port of Cyberpunk 2077. Now here we're running this game at a similar resolution at the medium graphics preset, which automatically applies metal FX upscaling. And once again, the game is using only 9.7 gigabytes of memory in total, including video memory. And the benchmark for these perfectly playable graphics settings across all three memory configurations is 33 frames per second average. Now, it was clear to me that these tests were not working as intended. To really show the limits of memory consumption on a Mac, what I did was turn the graphics preset up to ray tracing ultra with metal effects turned off. And this resulted in a memory consumption of 19 gigabytes. And as you can see here, the 16 gigabyte machine is completely over loaded on the left and it basically completely freezes up. If we take a look at the activity monitor, we can see that the 24 gigabyte machine is well within the memory pressure limits. It's all green there, but the 16 gigabyte M5 Mac is overloaded with data being swapped onto the much slower internal solid state drive. Now this test isn't particularly realistic and that's because we're never actually gonna turn up the graphics settings this high and turn off metal effects upscaling. If we were getting frame rates like this, we would just turn down the graphics to something like medium and we'd be able to get playable frame rates. So yes, technically the 24 and 32 gigabyte versions of the M5 Mac will run the game better at those settings, but the base 16 gigabyte model actually runs this at 1080p high with Metal FX set to quality mode just fine. And here we have a similar deal with Assassin's Creed Shadows, the latest native Mac port, which has a handy benchmark mode. And the graphics settings also help you to visualize how much VRAM each graphics preset uses, with ultra high using over eight gigabytes of video memory. So here we're just benchmarking the game at the low graphics preset, and we have pretty decent performance across all three devices. The game is using 12.2 gigabytes of memory, and it results in a 31 FPS average. So to try to push the memory usage as high as possible, I've run the benchmark again at the ultra high preset with Metal FX set to native AA, and this 
results in a memory usage of 18.63 gigabytes. And you can see that in this test, the 16 and 24 gigabyte models both experiencing major frame rate drops. However, the 32 gig machine was actually able to complete its benchmark whilst the 16 and 24 were still running in a slideshow. Largely thanks to the extra memory headroom that the 32 gig machine has. So as you can see, it only really makes a difference if you're running at these extremely high graphics settings with high memory usage, which isn't a realistic gameplay scenario. Next, we're going to be testing out very demanding Windows games running through the crossover translation layer. So this is the Windows PC port of Uncharted Legacy of Thieves. And we're running this at 1080p with the high graphics preset with the Metal FX turned off. So to be fair, this game actually has a memory leak when running on crossover and we're also compiling shaders at this stage, but we are going over that 16 gigabyte total memory limit. And on the 16 gigabyte machine on the left, you can see that once this app memory starts going above 17 to nearly 18 gigabytes, we start seeing some significant graphical issues and the gameplay tanks into single digit frames basically becoming another slideshow and this is definitely a scenario in which you want the m5 to have a little bit more memory but just be aware for this particular game you're going to eventually run into a memory leak which is going to exhaust all of the ram on your mac no matter how much you have and lastly we're looking at the last of us part 2 remastered the windows version of this port running through the crossover translation layer and at the low graphics preset we're running at about 39 fps with 13 gigabytes of memory used so what i'm doing here turning on the preset from very low to very high in order to maximize memory usage. And now this game has gone over 16 gigabytes of memory and that 16 gigabyte machine on the left has basically frozen going into single digit frames with terrible frame pacing. So yes, for sure you can see that in this particular game testing scenario, 16 gigabytes is just not enough, especially with all of the added video texture memory being loaded onto this machine. So now that we've done a variety of game tests on the 16, 24 and 32 gigabyte models, my conclusion is that 16 gigabytes of memory is gonna be fine for 95% of Mac gamers, as long as you're willing to turn down the graphics settings to acceptable frame rates. The base M5 with 16 gigs is enough to play virtually everything that I can throw at it. However, if you want to future-proof your Mac, then sure, upgrade to 24 gigabytes. It'll probably be safe for the next few years of game releases. And when it comes to 32 gigabytes, I actually struggle to find any relevant gaming tests where 32 gigabytes outperform 24 gigabytes. So I wouldn't necessarily upgrade to 32 gigabytes for the sake of gaming. And if you did want a lot of memory on your Mac for productivity or for gaming, I would seriously consider waiting for the M5 Pro and M5 Max chips to be released which will likely start at 24 gigabytes of memory as a minimum, as well as much higher GPU core counts, which is gonna make something like 2X or 4X improvement in gaming graphics performance over this base M5. Anyway, I hope you found this video interesting. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.